Luke chapter 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not faint. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Saying there was a city, a judge, not a certain judge. You get that one. Which feared not God, neither regarded man. This guy didn't care for nobody. God or people. And there was a widow in the city. She came to him, the judge, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. She came to the judge for justice. That's what you're supposed to do. She's in the right. There's wrong being done. She brings it to the law. He would not for a while. Well, he's not doing his job. His job is to take two matters, maybe more. He's to settle on the matters who is guilty and who is innocent and apply the sentence. He would not. But afterward, he said within himself, talking to himself. A lot of people do that in the Bible. Though I fear not God, in his own heart, he, heart, he said, I don't care about God. Nor regard man. I don't care what men. I don't care what God thinks. I don't care what men think. This is the kind of judge that you don't want sitting on the bench. Yet yeah, America is full of them. He's high on himself. Because who else is there? If it's not God and it's not mankind, who else is there? Yet, because this widow trouble with me, Judges 16, 16, I will avenge her, least by her continued coming she weary me. Now that is not proper holy judgment i am going to pass a judgment for this woman because she keeps bothering the heck out of me that's wrong i will pass judgment because he has thrown me enough money there is a way to buy this judge and this woman did not have to spend money she had to spend time she aggravated him she came to him continually 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 to he finally said you know what just shut up you're gonna get it even if she was in the, i'm not saying she's wrong but even if she would have been wrong time would have healed and shall not god avenge his own elect it's not christians his own people which cried day and night unto him, God, though he bear long with them. You know how many cries God has heard into his ears since Adam and Eve over those that really love God and want to do right because of those who don't fear God and don't care about man. You know how many of his elect, his Jewish people, the, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who he loved and called out during the Nazi regime. Think about it. Think about all the cries that God heard. Could he have stopped it? Yes. But did he stop it? How about us Christians? How about the cries we bring to him? Pain, sorrow, suffering, loss, aggravation. Just crying out. We're tired. We're fed up. We're lonely. Not getting our way. You know how you know God is the God of all the universe and all the judge and all that's all? Because he can hear each one of us. Allah says just end it with a sword. God said just give it time. Give it time. I understand. Let's give it time. 
at least one thing I can't say at the judgment seat of Christ, but I can say at the great white throne judgment, it will all be weighted out at that point. Yes, at the judgment seat of Christ too, but the final. Everyone that, that doesn't have anything to do with God or man, everything at the great white throne judgment will be settled out, evil now, guilty, innocent, the charges, the sentences set, and that's it. Then you go off into glory if you're saved. You're one of God's people. You're, you're a child of God. Then you just go off to glory and live with God for the rest of your life without anybody else to bother you. That sounds good. I tell you that he will ne he will avenge them speedily. Really? Doesn't seem speedily to me. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, second advent, shall he find faith on the earth. Oh, you mean as Noah's example is eight people? You mean as Lot is three people? There will be faith when Jesus, Jesus Christ comes. That raiment of Jews. It can't be the Gentiles because they have no idea what they're, what they're doing. Matthew 24, 25. Yeah, which one? There's got to be Jews who will have faith. And he spake this parable unto a certain. See. Verse 2 is just it's just a story. It's a parable story. Now we're back. This parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. All right, now he's now he's laying this parable to a certain point. He has this parable pointed to a group of people and to a group of people only. And you'll hear preachers say, "Well, never come up with a message just for somebody you know, they may not be there that, that Sunday. They may be gone yet, but Jesus had a message of certainly for a certain people. Come up with that message. If he's not there Sunday morning, tuck in your Bible, have another message ready. Wait for that guy to come. What are you going to do when Jesus did it? Which trusted in themselves. Ooh. That they were righteous. And despise others. Self-righteousness is who Jesus is going to preach against. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Sounds good, doesn't it? Starting very good. The one of Pharisee. Ooh. ooh uh oh. And the other a publican. Oh, Jesus. You're so cruel. You got the high up with the up, up, ivory throne above God himself. And you got the scum of the earth that we would rather kill him and save a cockroach. Jesus has gone from, from one to ten. Opposite sides of scale in just one story. And the Pharisees are sitting there. Yay, it's us. Yay. Boo. That's him. Boo. He's got their captive audience now. They're going to think as Pharisees, this is our story because it can't be bad because you're comparing us to the publican. That's the bad guy. Everyone sit up, all the little Pharisee kiddies now sit and listen to Jesus. He's going to tell us a good story because it started with us. And the Pharisees stood and prayed. See, look at that. We pray. Jesus honored it. Thus with himself, himself. Prayed thus with himself. He didn't say it out loud. He is his God. And all the times the Pharisees for 18 chapters have spoken within their hearts, Jesus has spoken up and answered them. Go ahead. At the school cafeteria with everybody in the school there, go ahead, bow your head and have a silent prayer over your meal. God heard you. 
You're in, you're in a classroom of a public school. You're about to take a spelling test. Go ahead, bow your head, look at the paper, say a silent prayer. God heard you. Okay? God. Well, started off good. I'm trying to think of the Lord's Prayer real quick. Uh, I used to. Father, I can't remember. But he dresses God first. Okay, we'll give him that much credit. Give him a pat. God. I thank thee. Ooh, that's good. I thank thee. Okay. Then the Pharisees are just. <laughs> and they got whipped cream. Uh, here comes the cherry. I am not as other men are. Sounds like that judge. I am better than them. You know what? They're still foaming at the mouth. Yay. Because they did think they were better than others. If Jesus would have known what sinner that woman was. Ooh. Extortioners. Unjust. Adulterers. Pointing out people's sins. I bet you these would walk up to you with a Bible in hand, witnessing and say, Judge not these, you be judged. And watch this. Or even as this publican. He's at the altar of God, praying to God, saying, I am not as all these people here, including this guy next to me. He doesn't even have a spot even to be near me. How scumful is he? God, send down fire to this guy because he should not be here with you and me. Oh. Oh. You see what the Pharisees were? And he ain't done. I fast in the week. Twice in the week. I don't even do that. Except for when I'm sleeping. I give tithes of all that I possess. You see the rottenness of that guy, God, and other people? But do you see the righteousness I have, God? It's like God didn't notice. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, you do? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you do? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. I was too busy feeding the whales. I'm sorry. All I have is write, write down this Pharisee's name and what he does, okay? You think, it's, you think it's ridiculous? Aren't we reading what he just said? God wrote it down. I believe this is a true story. I believe this happens in churches every Sunday. All over the world. One guy is praying to God how great he is and how terrible that guy is. This is human nature. But this is religion. This, is, this guy, Pharisee, represents, if you were to do a Pilgrim's Progress, this guy would be named religion. I give tithes of all that I possess. Ooh. And the publican. Done with the first guy. The publican standing afar off. Standing. You're supposed to be on your knees when you pray. Really? I'm going on a road and I'm going to have a track of trail smack me head on. I'm supposed to get on my knees and say, God. I need to do something here? No. There is no rules for position for standing. Afar off. He wasn't even near the Pharisee, the Bible records. He's a way off, and that Pharisee still recognizes him as you. Scum. He's dealing with God. He's praying to God, and yet afar off he can see one man and judge him before God and how great he is before God. And this happens all the time throughout the world, even among saved, born-again, Bible-believing Christians. It's called a click. We can't have those people in our group because they're not just like us, God. You see that? You see who they are? You see what they do, God? Man. 
You see what they have on their car? Oh my, oh, 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 give me a pill. Oh, give me the blue one, Lord God, please. Look how we are. We let our light show. I just can keep on going and going and going. But public and standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. You would think he would want to see God. You would think he would look up. A pig cannot look up. It's impossible for a pig to look up to the sky unless he's on his back, dead. This guy, this publican, is the sinner compared to religion. He is, God, I can't, I can't even stare at you. If I were to look to heaven and you were to come right now, you would fry me. God told Moses, you can't see my face. If you see my face, you're going to die. And this publican, this sinner says, God, I, I can't look at you. What if by chance if I were to look at heaven, I were to see you? This sinner, this publican is humble. Not looking to who he's speaking to. And they'll tell you, look in the eyes of the person you're speaking with. This guy, I'm not worthy to look into the eyes of God because he may be looking right back at me. He's breaking a, a American tradition of staring at you in the, in the eyes. Because he's afraid. If I look into the eyes of God, God might see that I may be lying. And I don't want to lie to God. I don't even want to think about a lie. I don't even want to intimidate my eyes to think I'm lying. Because what if I accidentally do lie in front of the holy God? I'll just keep my face down, look at the I'll look at the dirt that I'm made of. And thank God because I'm still not that dirt that's on the floor. That's what I'm gonna do. But smoke his breast upon his breast. And the Catholics copy that one. He's oh. Heart attack. Oh. I ought to die. I just ought to be dead. Before I'm speaking to God. Saying. God. He started the same way the Pharisees started. So get this people. Family. The same prayer is the same prayer of religion and of the sinner. It all begins with God. But one's sincere and one's not. So just because somebody walks up and starts a prayer, don't think they're saved. Okay? Because the Pharisee and the sinner began the prayer the same way. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, see, what is the difference between the, the religion and the sinner here? Religion. You see your sins. You see that sins. You see what he's doing. You see what she's wearing. You see what they're doing. You know what they're doing. You see that? God, you see that? The sinner. God, you've already seen what I've done. And this Pharisee has no idea what the publican's saying. The publican has no idea what the Pharisee's saying. And the sinner comes before God. God, how about if I do this? Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I'm just going to lump all my sins into one category and I've done it. Okay? Lying is not easier sin than covetousness. No, they're all sins, Lord. And I am a sinner. I'm the noun. It's not a verb. I verb sin, but I am the name of sin. See, the Pharisee puts it as a verb. The sinner puts it, it's me, Lord. I'm sin. When you look upon me, I'm sin. So, in order to be saved today by what God's standards, is God's got to look upon you. He's got to see righteousness. He can see in me. There's no way God's going to see righteousness in me because I am a sinner. I will be a sinner to the day you bury me on the rapture. 
So when God looks down and says, hey, listen, I don't want to see a sinner. He's got to see his son in you. And when God turns to the son and the son turns to the father and says, hey, father, that one's ours. I'll tell you what I think. I think. Because the Bible says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And it's remarkable that they had a game that you could simulate people. Sims. And they had this little diamond above your head. I forget what that was for. But I think when God looks upon mankind, I think he sees two things. I think he sees the blood. And I think he sees no blood. And I think sometimes our sins get get covering the blood, not washed in the blood. If not, Satan's there too glad to say, hey, God, Job 1 and 2, you see what that guy's doing? Be merciful to me, the sinner. Oh, I think, what was it? 1624 the man that was in hell he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me you know what's the difference here this sinner wants mercy before he dies you know a man in hell he wants mercy after he's dead I tell you wait a minute one, two, three, four, five, seven words the publican speaks. You, know, you, you want to dare what the Pharisees count those? That guy walked up to God, looked down the ground. God, I'm a sinner. Be merciful to me. I tell you that this man, the publican, went down to his house justified rather than the other, the Pharisee. Now you knew he now got a bunch of hisses and anger. Because his story was supposed to represent and support Pharise Phariseeism. That's a word. They were they're sitting there and they're saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he drops the bomb. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. This publican was better than the Pharisee. They would be offended today and call the police. For everyone that exalted himself, the Pharisee religion shall be abased. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Jesus has told you who was humble and who wasn't humble. So when you hear from the pulpits, I've got pride, proud, and you're not speaking God's language. And they brought unto him also infants. That he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. Get those kids out of here. But Jesus called them unto they call Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children. So in the eyes of God, infants are little children. Scripture with scripture. Come to me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Now notice they're not getting saved. They're just bringing them to Jesus and he's laying their hands on them. This would be the closest thing in Baptist churches today, a baby dedication. You're going to stand before your church, your family, and say, you know what? I'm going to give this child to God for the rest of its life. I've done that with Rachel. I don't know if I did that with Henry. But Jesus called on them and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Don't you forbid your children to go to 
Mom, I got invited to, to go to uh, church with, with a friend from school or friend from the playground. You better not tell that child no. We've already read it. It'd be better if you had a millstone tied around your neck. It's funny how Jesus said in that, in that chat, it's better if you have a millstone tied around your neck. You didn't say put a mustard seed around your neck. Maybe you just kill yourself. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, the little children, the infants, shall in no wise enter therein. You've got to come to God in the sweetness of trusting. When dad throws you up in the air and you come flying down, you trust the fact is he's going to catch you. When you come to Calvary, you trust the fact is that God will say what he said he's going to do. He's going to wash away your sins. He's going to forgive you and take you out of hell and bring you to God. You're going to believe that. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? That's a good question. And Jesus said, And why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. So this is a proof text of Jehovah Witnesses that Jesus is not God. Well, They didn't believe who Jesus Christ was. The rich ruler, the Pharisees, the people of Israel did not believe. So why call me good? You honor God, but you don't honor me. That's what he's saying. Problem is, you got to honor God and Jesus Christ. But we'll move on with it. We'll, 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 we'll move on with the debate. But I know you don't honor me as God, so don't call me good. Now, if you think I was God, and God is me, then you can call me good, but you don't honor me. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Look at Jesus backing up what Moses wrote. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up, and there is no rebuke of Jesus. Can you keep all the commandments? What's it say? There was no television. There was no billboards. There was no radio. There were no cell phones. Women wore clothes that covered them completely up. And if you were a harlot, you had your own attire. You didn't go down to the, to the lake in, in half-naked clothing. You didn't have magazines to produce the wickedness. You didn't have the, inter the internet. Modernness has caused you to sin more and more conveniently. And he said, all these have I kept from my youth up. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, no rebuke, yet lackest thou one thing. I mean, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six things named father and mother to each. He's done all that. You're not supposed to, aren't you supposed to give him a bozo button? Aren't you supposed to give him a balloon? Aren't you supposed to give him a, a, a ribbon? Aren't you supposed to give him a Bible? Come on, don't name one more thing, Jesus. You're going to ruin, you're going to ruin the little boy's, uh, well, heart in his mind and you, he's going to grow up with a Jesus syndrome set all that thou hast sell all that thou hast distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasures in. now you see where they get that one if I give all my money I'll be saved and I'll have treasure in heaven not without the blood of Jesus Christ today Jesus has not died he has not been buried. And he has not risen from the grave. We are in a different dispensation. We are in the dispensation of law and works. Jesus said, you want to be saved? He said, what must I do for eternal life? Keep the commandments and go sell everything you have and give. What's Paul say to the church age? What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Things have changed. 
In the 1700s, you never saw a sign that said, be aware or beware live wires. But you need that sign today. Things change. And come and follow me. You know, tell them, give it all up. Divide yourself and come with me. Remember, he's got at least 12 men follow him that don't have anything anymore. Matthew. He doesn't have a job. Maybe just a pencil and a piece of paper. Oh, I don't know. Peter, Andrew, James, and John are not making money off fish. He's telling this man, sell everything. I, hey, listen, you've done great by the commandment. Sell all that you have and come. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. What commandment did he break? Seven. Okay, but well, how about coveting? One of the same. One of the same. But you know, the, the Big Ten does say, the, the Big Ten does say covet. Thou shalt not covet. Here's his sin. He did good with adultery. He did good with a murder. He didn't steal. He didn't steal to get this money. You notice that? He either got it by inheritance or he worked. Let's get the fact down that he did not steal it. Do not lie. He did not lie to get this money. He did not sell used cars or camels. Okay. Let's get. He got this money honestly and he didn't get it without being a thief. And he honored his father and mother. He did not stiff his parents to get this money. Yet he's still guilty of one commandment. Coveting. And then now he's guilty of the first commandment. He's not putting God first. Because he would follow Jesus. He's also broken the second commandment. He now has a God. It's called money. He walked away from God to serve his God, money. With coveting, he has broken three commandments right off the bat. Who knows? Maybe he worked on the Sabbath to get it. I don't know. I'm not going to read more into it. But he has broken three commandments now. Coveting, honoring God first, and then having an idol. Idol would be his money. And when Jesus saw that, he was very sorrowful. Very, look at the very. Very sorrowful, very rich, very sorrowful. When Jesus saw he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter the kingdom of God? We're not in the dispensation of church age. Where we are in Jesus' time, in the period that we are in, the law stated you are to help the widows, the fatherless, and those that are poor to be saved in the Old Testament under the law. The owner of Walmart, the, the CEOs of this nation, if we were under the law, are to take care of the people that are poor, busted, and don't get nothing. But that's not how it works today. See, we're under grace. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye. Then for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. So there's a gate in Jerusalem that no one's ever found called a needle's eye. And that's where the camels go through. Because we make big money selling our perverted Bibles. And we don't want you to think we're thieves. So there's a gate in Jerusalem that no one's ever found that where camels went through. And they called it the needle's eye. It's still probably. But the, 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 the camels had to duck. 
And they had to slam their hoofs into the, the, the arch to get through the gate. That's what they say. No, Jesus meant a sewing needle. I think everybody knew what a sewing needle was back then. And there was probably a camel standing there. Maybe this guy sold camels. I always thought I wondered. Maybe he was a used camel salesman. I don't know. Try to get a camel through a needle's eye. Yeah. But that's what man can do with salvation. That's what religion can do. You know what your Catholic priest, you know how much he can get you into heaven? Take a camel and put him through a sewing needle's eye. You know what a rabbi can do today to get you into, into the glory land? Take a camel and put him through a needle's eye. And I can do that with all the religions. You know what Allah can do for your soul? He, You have better chance of putting a camel through a needle's eye than relying on Allah. That's man. Now let's look at God's way, shall we? Question is, here's the proper question. And they that heard it said, who then can be saved? That's a great question. I wish people asked that of me. Now watch this. We've seen religion, verse 25. We don't want to mock religion. We'll, we'll build a gate. We'll make our own gate, Jesus. You have your straight gate. We'll take the highway door to hell. Okay? But let's see. He said, the things which are impossible with man, verse 25, are possible with God, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. J.C. Penny, a rich man, was saved. Who's going to save a man despite of what his rich condition is? Poor or extreme richer? Donald Trump could get saved today. By his money? Absolutely not. By his buildings? Absolutely not. By his wives? Absolutely not. But if he were to proclaim tomorrow in the news media, I had had a Bible actually open to me, read to me by a person of a church who is a true Christian, has shown me the way of life and shown me the way of death. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior. The entire media and world and Christians would throw him out the window because he's been married three times. But God would say, excuse me. He has believed on my son. He is saved by my way. The way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto me but by the Father. If you come by Jesus Christ, there you go. You're saved. You can't buy your way into it. There is no sign at the heaven's gate that says cash, check, or visa, MasterCard, or American Express. I don't see that at the door of heaven. I do know for sure it will be by blood. And when you get to the great white throne judgment, it'll be say, okay, payment time. What do you got to pay? If I see the blood, there'll be saved people at the great white throne judgment. If I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Remember what the Old Testament did? They offered blood sacrifices, didn't they? They went to Abraham's bosom. And then when Jesus died, they were released from Abraham's bosom. They will have the blood to wash them. God can save anybody. Man cannot. You can give all your money to another man in the name of religion, and you ain't going nowhere but to hell. And without your money. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Did you get what Peter just said? We left it all, Christian. We left it all. Sweet Cakes, mother-in-law, is back in Galilee. We're down here heading to Jerusalem. We left it all. The boat is there. The nets are there. James, John, Zebedee is there. I forgot what their mother's name was. It's mentioned. She's there. Well, actually, she, she followed Jesus, the Bible said. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Peter and the disciples, there is no man that has left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time in the world to come life everlasting. 
You divide yourself against everybody for God, in the name of God, Jesus Christ, you'll be rewarded abundantly. What about more, let's say, if your wife does follow Jesus Christ with you? Think about the double blessings you get. Your wife will be rewarded by what you do, husband, even if she don't go with you for whatever reason. You go knocking on doors and your wife can't go. She's got to take care of the children or make your dinner and stuff like that. She can't go. Somebody gets saved. Your wife is credited to that. When your wife is at Walmart and spending all your money, okay? No, 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 no. no. Let me bring up my kid. When my wife is at Walmart and I'm walking out the place, I go to find her. I can't find her. She's passing out gospel tracts. Everybody's sitting there. And somebody gets saved. I get credited for what she's done too. And when I get to glory, they'll be praising her for giving them a gospel track in the name of Jesus Christ and the gospel. And they'll be praising the fact that you brought your wife to Walmart. That I can trust my wife with my check. I can trust my wife with, with the bank. I can trust my wife by anything. And then she can go give out the gospel to other people. We can rejoice in that eternity. Imagine Walmart being a place where you're saved. Ooh. And he took unto him the twelve the twelve and said unto him behold we go up to Jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished he's going to fulfill the scriptures and I don't know if Luke does the mountain transfiguration but Mo I was gonna say Peter and John Moses and Elijah will show up and say okay Jesus Except for this stuff, but right now everything's been fulfilled, checked off. All you gotta do is go to Calvary, you gotta go to hell, and then you gotta come out of that grave, and everything of, of the law and everything of the prophets will be fulfilled as far as the first advent. Let's go. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles by the priests, and shall be mocked. And spitefully entreated and spit upon. You put all this together with, with Isaiah 53. And Jesus did not have a good afternoon that day. By the way, it was from the middle of the night in the garden. After dinner. After 6 p.m. The entire night he had that kangaroo court. In the morning, he is shipped off to Pilate. Cock crew. You know, how the, you, know, you, you, know how, you knew the cock crew. And then he's going to 3 p.m. He's nailed on the cross. And then 6 p.m., you know, read the dates, read the times. From the time of the garden to he dies. He didn't get any sleep. And they shall scourge him, cat of nine tails, and put him to death. Now that's funny, put him to death. He's God. And the third day he shall rise again. Wouldn't you rejoice to hear that? That's the gospel. Christ died for our sin. Oh, well, let's add something. Christ suffered for our sins. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, verse 31. He was buried. And he arose again the third day. According to the scriptures. The gospels in 31, 32, 33. And they understood none of these things, the twelve. And this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. Boy, they're reviewed in the book of Acts. They're reviewed that, that day when he's in the he shows up in the upper room and rebukes them for their unbelief. You may not get it the first time. Don't lose doubt when you when your witnesses is under, I don't get it. I don't, I don't. Just keep praying for him. Jesus keeps praying. Paul says, I planted Paul's war. At least at least takes two people for someone to get saved. Two workers. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, the cursed city, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Well, that's one of the places where the seeds went. And hearing the multitude pass by, 
He asked what it meant. Man, they're making a commotion. Work for a call center and you'll hear that commotion of people talking. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This blind man learned about Jesus. They which went before rebuked him. Shut up. Don't call him over here. Don't you even dare get that man over here. You just let him go. No, honey, you don't want to believe in Jesus. Let me, after this church service, we'll, we'll go get something to eat at the restaurant. And then, you know, I'll go buy you a couple nights. Don't you dare call Jesus over into this family, okay? Son, you don't want to have Jesus come in here. No, he, 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 I'll sign you up for Little League. We'll sign you up for Pee Wee football. We'll take care. You just, you don't want to invite Jesus, okay? Don't call him over. Whatever you do, Jesus is known to stop when people call him. Don't you even call him, okay? Me, your father, Satan, I'll find something for you to do that you don't need that Jesus, okay? You know, I'll give you three more apples for the same price. Just don't go over to that preacher. You get, you'll get more apples. Don't call him over. Shut up. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more. He let it all out this time. There ain't no shutting this man up. And he's not even saved. Thou son of David recognizes the king king jesus have mercy on me wasn't that the, the the sinner back here have mercy on me isn't that the rich man that was in hell have mercy on me you know what you gotta want when you want to get saved you gotta have god give you mercy have mercy on me there's no pride absolutely no pride in this man people don't want this man to come to jesus and he don't want jesus to come to this man they know jesus will change his life lord we need another guy getting up speaking and being a witness for jesus we don't need that and jesus stood you know what that meant he stopped they said jesus passes by now Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And now you know the people. Oh, now you did it. Now he's coming. Thanks a lot. Really? Just thank you very much. Now he stopped and he's coming over here. Thank you. You moron. You're making Jesus come over here to you. Who do you think you are? Your mother, your grandparents, your great-grandparents have been in this has been has in this religion. How dare you call Jesus over here? Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou what would thou that I should do unto thee? Jesus already knew he wanted him to say it himself. You got to ask. You got to seek. You got to knock. Read what James says about prayer. You can't get if you don't ask. This man would not have gotten his eyesight if he said, Nothing. I don't want anything. Just wanted to call you over. And he said, Lord, Lord. That I might that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him. Where would he follow him? Into Jerusalem. Glorifying God. 
You know what happens when you get mercy from God? You glorify God. Somebody gets saved and they don't glorify God. I have all rights by the Bible to question your salvation. If you don't follow Jesus after you got saved, I have a right by scripture to say, I doubt your salvation. If you don't speak about Jesus, according to Paul, I have a right to doubt your salvation. Immediately he received his sight, followed him, glorifying God, and all the people, and all the people, when they saw it, saw him. You can't see the blindness, you can't see the open eye, when they saw him glorifying God in his life. Now they gave praise unto God. And we already read, Jesus is on his way to Calvary, and the people are rejoicing over him. You're going to have a big change of events coming up pretty soon because they'll be yelling, crucify him, crucify him. 